Hello, uh, this is uh, Stat Class, Math 40, your favorite, and I'm going to show you how to do Chapter 7 homework quickly. You don't waste a lot of time. There's apparently, there's, there's round-off error, whether you use a table with a T distribution or the Z distribution, it seems to be a thing. So I'm going to show you how to do it with Stat Crunch, okay? Okay, here I want to find my interval for mu. Mu is the population mean, right? And I want to do it different. So I need this information right here, you see, where it says this stuff. That's what I actually need. So uh, I'll copy that and then I'll put it over here in mine. I'll put it here. That way I won't lose it. Uh, hmm. This already has an interval there. Oh, they already set an interval here. So this is really easy. You don't have to do anything but enter these numbers here. Right, so. They want you to round the two decimal places, so that's two decimal places, so that would be like uh, 13.05, right, to two decimal places. That would be like 13.05, and this other one, they're already telling you what it is, 22.15, oh, that's excellent. And the best is, the best estimator for mu is the sample mean, which is x bar. Okay, so that's going to be 17.598. How many want two decimal places? 1.5, and then they want to round that up. That would be cancel. 1.5. So do I want to find 9, or do I go all the way up to 6? I don't know. This round off stuff is up. Now, the margin of error, the so round to the nearest thing for the margin of error, so that's going to be. You need to, to get the critical values, and you need the, uh, so all you have to do is subtract the average, remember? Because the average plus the error term, and then the average minus the error term. So they already gave you this, 22.15. So take a look. If I take 22.15, and subtract the numbers they gave us, in this case, they're going to subtract, um, oops, sorry, 20, no, go back. 22.15. Uh, I'm going to have to change the sign because it's going to be positive, right? Hmm, zero. Interesting. How did that work? So I'm going to enter the top one 22.15 and subtract the average, which is 17.598. See? So that's it. That must be the error term. 4.522. So I just put 4.5. Good. I'm done. That was pretty easy. Now, if you look at this range, it doesn't contain zero, right? So it says because a sample deviation is known, the normal distribution can be used. Uh, we don't know it. See, it's S of X right here. See that? Not not sigma. That's the sample deviation. So that won't work. Because the sample deviation known, the normal relationship can be used to construct it. Well, normally when it's not known, you'll use the T distribution. Oh, because it's greater than 50? Yeah, and it's greater than 50, so... Yeah, 50 is okay. So that means we could use a normal curve here. Okay, now this one here, it degrees of freedom. Is one less, right, than 50. So there's 49. That's easy. Okay. I really wish this thing would be done. So we have T sub alpha at the 95 level. So we already know what the uh, what the error term is, right? Uh, so let's go back up. Oh, it doesn't go back up. Okay. And so now we have to find out. T sub alpha divided by 2. So you can see this is 0.95, right? So 1 minus 0.95 is 0 0.05. So then we have, we're going to do here, and now we're going to take it from here. So let's see. Here's a T. So now <coughs> 0 0.05 divided by 2 is going to be 0 .0, 0, 0, 0, 0.025. 0 0.025. So let's take a look at that. Uh, so it's at a 95% confidence interval. 
right, which is going to end up giving me an alpha of 0.05, with half of that is 0.025. Okay, so now I look at 0.025. So this is how much area would be in this tail right here. 0 0.025 in degrees of freedom was uh, 49. So it doesn't go to 40. So we're going to see 49. We don't have it. So, I don't know. It's going to be pretty close to, uh, it's the third column, is it? Yeah. Let's try this one. So, we have degrees of freedom. Ah, let's try this one. It's 50 is pretty close to 49. I don't know. So, I'm going to say 2.009. That's the critical value, T, T critical value. Am I telling you that that answer is going to be I hope it's going to be mm, at 50 is 2.0019 and it's 2.014. So 2.0, uh, 2.0, right? That was the number I had here. It was two. Okay, here we go. I go down here, 250, 2.009. This is a critical value, 009. Okay, didn't like that. 2.009. So I'm going to go up here to 50. Instead, I'll go to 45. So it's 2.014. 2.0. Right? Let's try that. Uh, critical value for 95%. Stupid. Okay. So it's 2.01. Man, I forgot they wanted to round it up to two decimal places. How stupid. Oh, you see it? Okay. Now, when you have T, that means you're using S, not sigma, for the deviation. So the number of degrees of calculation uh, can vary. The number of degrees of freedom of the collection is the total number of sample values. Uh, determined after certain restrictions have imposed on the data values, the number of degrees of freedom for the collection of sample data is the number of non-repeated sample values. The number of degrees of freedom uh, can vary. I don't know, but like whatever. Let's try that. Oh, okay. So now let's go to next. All right, now refer to the accompanying data. Oh, here's the data again. See. And so there's our interval there. It gave us the interval right here. And it says refer to the data. Okay. So they want a 95% confidence. Write a statement. 95, we have 95% confidence that the limit of 13.05 and 22 will contain a sample mean of the data speeds of the airport. Well, yeah. We, we have a 95% confidence, right, that we'll do that. Uh, and now, B is 13.05 to 22.5, the true value of the mean of the population of all data speeds at the airport. Mm. No, not all, right, because it's going to be 5% error, error. We have confidence interval from 30 that contains the true value of the mean population of all. No, not all. So well, here's another all. 13 contains all data speeds. No, no, no. Get rid of the word all. Mm -hmm. There's all. 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 Yeah, we're 95% confidence that it's contained here. And we're 95% confidence that between 32 and 22.15 it contains the true value of the mean of the population of all data speeds. Mm -hmm. It contains the sample. What contains the sample mean? No, God's truth is not the sample mean. It contains the true value mean of the population. Mm -hmm. it contains it too. So it should be 95 percent. We have a 95 percent confidential opinion that contains the true value of the mean of the population. That's true. Pains 90% of all data speeds now. This one looks better. Uh, good. Okay. So now.
let me show you. This is really what I want to do to show you how to calculate these things. Okay, assume that we want to construct a confidence mode. You uh, do one of the following. Find that or find that. Now, confident where sigma is not known, that means you're going to use S. Okay, and then here we go. So we have this thing here, salaries and thousands of dollars. Uh, that says, uh, so we, I'll let you do that. You can use this. Uh, it doesn't look like it's even, it doesn't look normally distributed, right? So it doesn't look like normal or T. Uh, oops. The sigma is known, use a normal. When T is not known, use a T distribution to be able to assess, right? So is it over 30? What is the sample size? Neither of these tests are used when the population is not normally distributed or the n is less than 30. Did they tell us what n is? Oh, 58. Doesn't look so normally distributed. So then you could take this and now uh, find this critical value. That says uh, select the correct choice below if necessary. Necessary fill the answer box to complete your choice. Okay. Oh, well. Uh, use the table in the back of the book, you know, for the T and the Z. See how that works. Let's go over here. Anyway, this is what I want to get to right now. Okay, I'm going to show you how to do this. Here we have random variable N is 179, right? You see that? 179 and an X bar. So this is the first problem. So we have this thing right here, right? That's the first one. Okay, and then we have a confidence interval at 99%, right? Okay, so we have confidence in 99. So now we're going to have to find an interval to hold God's truth between our calculations. So uh, the way to do this is find, okay. Uh, oh, that's this. Are these results very different from the confidence show with only 13 values? So that's the other problem. So now we have n is 13 and x bar is 28 and 2.3. Uh, we actually have to construct what is the population, what is the deviation for the population mu? Okay, so, um, so if we start with the first guy, we have 179, right? And so, uh, so we go. Well, now, why didn't it let me get into my uh, stack crunch here? Let's see. Well, we got it right here. Okay. Oops. I don't need that. So come on. Oh, I forgot some paper. It's not so cool. Okay. My stack crunch. Okay, sure. I can flip this a little bit smaller. Okay. And we'll go here. All right. So um, I don't need any of that. So now what you do is this is from another problem. So uh, all right, we're back up to the top. Okay. Now this is how you do it. So you don't have to mess around with this. So the first one. Now we're going to go to stats, and you can use a Z because it's over you know 179, but we have S here, so we should use T. So now we're going to do one sample, right? But not with data, but with summary. Okay, so now I just put the sample mean, right? So I can see it's 28.8. Right? And the sample deviation is 6.6, uh, right? And the sample size is going to be 179. See that? Now, I don't want hypothesis testing, so I'm going to go to confidence interval, and I want 99. All right, look at that. So we have a left limit and an upper limit. So round to one decimal place. So that's 27.1, uh, 27.5, right? So I'm going to go here, and let's go back over to um, my left lab. Okay, and then the other one is 30.8, see? So now I'm going to copy that, uh, right, and I'll put it right here. And then I'm going to put paste. Oops. This time I have to do control. 
Oh, neat. Okay, and it just wanted one decimal place, right? So I'm going to change this to 3.1, 30.1. Okay, and there you have it. Ta da! Yeah, easy. Now, are these two results close together? Well, look at this one. That's 26, that's 27. This is 30, that's 30. Point. That's pretty close. Yes, because one interval contains the mean, the other uh, the, uh, does not contain the mean. What? Yes, because the confidence intervals are not similar. Well, they look similar. So, uh, yes, because the confidence intervals are not similar. Uh, are, you, are the results between the very uh, intervals very different? No, they're not different. Because the confidence are similar. Now, let's go to the next one. Okay, now, let me show you how to work this one. I'm going to do it over again. I just see the okay. So now, um, let's take a look at what we got here. So, we got this uh, 43. So, N, see that N is equal to 43, correct? And over here, you're going to have cholesterol levels, you know, about taking garlic before and after. And these levels of LDL cholesterol, uh, it's milligrams per deciliter. Have a have a mean of so x bar is equal to 5.2, right? And the standard deviation s is equal to 15.8. You see, and they want a confidence interval of 99 percent. Okay, what does this suggest about the effectiveness of garlic to reduce LDL? Okay, so let's try it. First of all. Um, uh, let's take a look at it. So um, we can go here. We can go to the distribution. Did I even like that? Okay, or we can go right to stat. I need this one. All right. But now I'll get rid of this. Right, and I'll go to stat. And let's go uh, because uh, we don't know sigma, so we'll use the t. We had, you had to use s, so we do one. And we have summary data, not raw data. So there it is. What's the sample mean? The sample mean is going to be 5.2, and the sample deviation is going to be 15.18. See it? And the sample size over here is 43. It's too easy, right? And we don't want a hypothesis test yet. That's 8. So we go here, and we want a confidence interval of 99. So we'll compute. Ah, look at that. So we have a left upper limit, right? And so they wanted, uh, oh shit, sorry, <laughs> excuse my French. Okay, so here we have minus 3.0, which is what they have, right? And so it's going to be minus 3.0, and then remember what our, our mean is 5.2, right? Mm-hmm. So there it is. There's some limits, minus 1.30, which is what they got. And the other one's 11.7, .7, which is what they got. Got it? All right, let's try another one so you can see what I mean. With data. Let's try it with data. Uh, okay, so we want to construct a 90% interval for the drive-through times. So you go here. Okay, and now it's loading. And now let's first calculate for X. So now I go here, and I will load up the stat crunch, right? Open it up. And I'll make this smaller. Uh, that music is Russian hip hop. Okay, so now I got right here. All right, nice. Okay, there we go. Okay, that's no problem. So let's do the first one. The first one's going to be. Uh, let's see if I can come up with our answer. Right. So I'm going to go for the first one. It's going to be with X stuff. So I'm going to go here to. Uh, well, we have to calculate the deviation and all that, right? But it should be able to do it. Let's see if it does it. So I go to one sample, right? And I go with data. Okay. And there it is. Now we're going to start. We're going to do X. I hit the control button to add more than one. Okay. I don't want this. I want confidence interval, right? At what thing? At 90%. See? At 90. 90. So there it is. 90. Got it? Oh, well, I think we got everything. So it should be able to. Ah, here we go. So now we got from 164.2, which is what they got, to 194. You see that? 
94 point, and since you're going to uh, one decimal place, they round it up to 192. So this is just going to be 142, right? Because point, it's just 142. So that one's going to be 142. I mean, if you want, you can put point zero. It doesn't matter. And then the other one's going to be 165.7, right? So over here, we're going to go 142. Uh, I said 142, right? Um, and the other one's going to be, uh, was that 165? Uh, 165.7? Okay, here we go. Ready? All right, so let's test it out. Good. Okay, that's how it's done. Okay, now, if we look at them, mm, compare the results. They're not real close. The confidence interval estimates of the two uh, overlap, so there does not appear to be a significant difference. Hmm. They, uh, they don't overlap completely. This is smaller, not open up, so. Uh, overlaps or does not appear to be a significant difference. No? They said it does not. Okay, the confidence of two overlap, so it appears that X has a faster mean. Mm, not really. The confidence interval of two do not overlap, and X has a faster mean than Y. Ah, the confidence interval for two restaurants do not overlap, so there does not to be. A, well, they do overlap partly. Okay, two confidence intervals overlap. It's possible to have the same mean if the two are different. They do overlap. And so that means that between them, there's not to be a significant difference. Good. Okay, got it. That's how you use it so you don't get mixed up again. So let's try this last one so you can see what we got here. So it's pretty easy because now they gave us. Uh, it says IQ test, the mean is 100, standard deviation 13. Okay, and then they find uh, the mean IQ. So, and they want a 95% confidence that the sample is within three IQ points of the true mean. Assume now they give you sigma is 13. The sample is within 95% 3. Uh, let's see. Hmm. Okay. So, I can go back to Stack Crunch. I don't know how to care. Not know how way. How way. That's not Chinese. Not know how way. That's where the fire was started. Then I go to Stats. And now we have Sigma, so I might go to Z. I go to one sample with summary. And the sample mean on this guy is uh, 100, right? That's the, that's the average. And, this, and the standard deviation is 13, yeah? And the sample size? Fine. Oh, the sample size necessary. Okay, you're supposed to find in. Ah, 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 ah. Then determine if it's a reasonable sample. So we got to find in. Mm. And that I have to think about. Uh, to find the sample size, there's an equation in the book to show you how to calculate in. So look at that, and we'll go over the rest later. Okay, let me go back to this and I'm going to end this. I'll send it out. Okay, let me stop.